Hello everyone, hope you are well on this Saturday morning. It is January 20th, and here in North Georgia where we are located, it is a sunny day. It looks beautiful out there. It's 10 degrees, but it's beautiful. It's a little cold for us. I think we're supposed to get a high, reach a high of 36 degrees above freezing. So that's probably pretty warm compared to a good many of you in the country. I'm hearing from some of you that are like, crazy temperatures kind of cold so stay safe out there stay safe be prepared if, especially if you're driving okay got several things to cover here the world it seems like the world is gearing up for world war three if it ain't haven't already started you can make an argument for that of course uh the elites the elites are in panic mode they're in hysterics it's kind of entertaining to watch actually and the healthcare system in Denver, Colorado, sounds like, at least it seems or sounds like, they're in a near collapse. I'll go a little bit more into that. And I have an excellent verse to share, so you definitely want to stay tuned for that. It'll make you think a bit. It'll make you think, and it'll make you thankful, too. All right. Real quick, first, I saw the story. Is This is talking about entertaining. Maybe not entertaining for everybody. But in Chicago, and I've heard similar in uh, Colorado, I think in Denver as well, they're having a little problem with EVs. If you have an EV, electric vehicle, they don't do so well in extreme cold temperatures, like below freezing, even near zero, I guess, sub-zero temperatures. Um, you know, the lithium battery, the, they, they, they say it takes forever to charge. I saw a story, I saw a little video about it. I think it was somewhere near Chicago where just rows of these charger, these Tesla chargers with these Teslas lined up and snow everywhere. It looks cold, so cold there. And people were there for hours, like since the day before trying to get these things charged up and they still can't charge. They still can't go anywhere. And when they do, they lose at least half their charge. Like the, the computer will tell them you have 150 miles and like a few minutes later, they're running out of charge. One guy said he just had a, he had to have his code to the Tesla dealership. I think we got a long way to go for all electric. Oh, we got a long way to go for that. I'm all for, Hey, you know, if it's efficient, you know, okay. But I think we're, we're not there technology wise. Okay. If we're on the one hand talking about EVs and pushing EVs and on the other hand, you know, the Texas, the, the grid and all that and the other places in California are talking about having to have rolling blackouts that don't jive, man. That don't jive. That doesn't that doesn't compute to me and a lot of you, I know. So uh, the White House dismissed this and said that, oh, you know, all vehicles uh, are have uh, issues in extreme cold temperatures. I don't know about that because I have a 20 year old Toyota Tacoma and it, go, it runs on gasoline only. And, you know, we had. I think we had one or two mornings here this past week where it was like five degrees or six degrees. It was single digits. And, you know, my truck started up good. I make sure it has antifreeze in it and it's kept up. It's, it's maintained. And it cranked up and rolled just fine. It ran just fine. It might have growled a little bit at me as I cranked it up, but uh, give it a little warm up. It's good to go. It really was. All right. I know I probably spent too much time on that one, y'all. All right. The world seems to be gearing up for World War III. And I tell you, I, I hear these European leaders saying, telling their citizens we need to gear up for all out war with Russia. You know, I mean, you know, from what I can tell, all Russia's done is try to get their little piece of, uh, of Ukraine. Which in a way, if you really look at it objectively, I don't I really don't blame them for wanting to buffer between themselves and NATO. I mean, yeah, they invaded, but I don't know. You know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. But I tell you, if it, the world seems bent on it, on, on, and you can make an argument that it's already started as far as WW3, and people, and most of the people here, totally clueless, y'all, totally clueless. They're in for a rude awakening if this really erupts like it could, which I believe it will eventually, probably this year and the next, possibly, possibly. Uh, people don't realize what is, what's going on. You know, your supplies will not be available. You'll not be able to go to the store and just get what you want. It won't happen. And if you can, the prices are going to be so through the roof, it'll be difficult to buy anything. That's just one thing. 
not to mention all the other issues, banks, stores, gasoline, fuel, electricity, maybe. So there's that. That's something we need. We'll keep, we'll keep looking at the elites are in near panic, not near panic. They're in panic. Uh, we saw this, uh, with Michelle Obama saying that she's scared, uh, the vice president Harris saying that she's scared as heck. And the WEF, they are in a panic mode. I saw where they were, um, they were having a little meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, their uh, their meeting over there in Switzerland's over, but they were having a meeting just to talk only about reacting to or preparing for the possibility that Mr. T will be president again here in the United States, and they're so worried about it. And you got to wonder, what, what does it say when so many people, so many supposedly important and powerful people are in a panic over one man? What does it say? Now, say what you will about the T-Man. You know, I've had my issues too with him. Okay, I, he's he's got issues, I know. But one thing, I, I just keep going back to this. And he said this a while back. I know. I can't remember exactly when. Uh, but, uh, when he said that it's not, it's not me they're after, it's you, I'm just standing in their way. He was totally right on that. He was totally right. Totally correct. The man had a point right there now. Now, yeah. Is he an egotistical blowhard jerk? Yeah, he is. I don't know. Sometimes I think we need somebody like that in charge. But that's just me. That's just me. That's just my my one man's opinion here. Like I said, I got my issues too. I do with him. You know, do I wish we had more to choose from? Like, yeah. But we don't. We don't. It doesn't appear that way, at least. But anyway, back to the WEF. They're like, one lady, this uh, European Central Bank president, Christine Lagardo, Lagarde? This, these people, they look like something off the old movie, uh, like the, the James Bond spoof movies, the Goldfinger and all this. We want world domination. You know, these people are so stupid. But anyway, uh, she said the best defense against this would be to attack. <laughs> attack properly. How do you attack properly, miss? Can you explain that, please? She went into some word salad about it, but no idea what she's talking about. Uh, panic, panic has set in, which is kind of concerning. Like how far will these people go? You know, that I, I kind of alluded to that in yesterday's video as well. And I, I know it's something else. Other story here, the healthcare, healthcare y'all, I think it's in big time trouble. You know, it's been talked about some, but I saw a story. There's two things here to this. But uh, I saw a story where Milford Regional Medical Center, I believe this is in Massachusetts, they said that they may deny care. They would deny care to somebody that's using quote unquote unwelcome words. Now, what he means by that is uh, unwelcome words about race and gender. If you come in there and, and, and uh, violate their code of conduct as a patient now and use offensive comments, in regards to ethnicity, accent, sexual orientation, religion, gender, they can deny you care. But you know what? I don't know about that. I don't think you can do that, sir. I don't, I don't believe you get to do that. That's just my initial, my initial reaction to that. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, I don't think you get to do that. No. Also related, uh, health care. Denver, Colorado got some issues health care wise. Um, they have received a lot of illegal immigrant immigrants, illegal migrants into their community. And it is, it is overburdening. It is, it is pushing their healthcare system to the brink of collapse. And, and they're actually saying that, and they're begging for help from the federal government. They're begging for a, a, a bailout on this because they said that, uh, 
in the last year, 8,000 illegals have recorded over 20,000 visits to Denver healthcare system, like I said, just in the last year. This includes ER visits, primary care, dental care, childbirth. Like I said, it's pushing them to the breaking point. And, and that's what they're saying. And they're begging for help. They're begging for a bailout. You know, and this is, this is, uh, this will happen everywhere else. It's like a domino effect. If this, if something's not done about it, if something's not done to fix this problem and God bless the Texas guard, they're standing firm, at least right now, they're just flipping the finger to the administration and saying, no, man, no. We're still holding an Eagle Pass right now, and it will continue. It's an interesting development, and to watch how this goes here. But uh, but anyway, back to Denver. Uh, but this this is just a, a, one example of of what will fall in other places if if this just continues, because they will it will just uh, it will eat up resources and social services, health care. You name it, uh, places to live, housing, hotels, these shelters, and it's taken away, I mean, from your citizens, whether a citizen is homeless or whether they're not homeless, or whether they're just poor or middle class, heck, middle, middle class is poor now, right? We feel it. And, uh, you know, so, so we have that, that issue, brink of collapse, y'all. Uh, it's a, it's a problem. So anyway, I wanted to bring some of these things, share your thoughts on these, but uh, multiple issues, 2024 proven already. I mean, we're not out of January uh, yet, are we? And, uh, and things are interesting already. All right. I'm going to go to this verse because it's a, it's a good one. Good one. All right. Bear with me. Luke. Luke chapter 5, verses 30 through 32 says, But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to the disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink? Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. Amen. We all need some Jesus, don't we? All we need a lot of Jesus every day and every hour, no matter who we are, if we're human, we need him because we're broken. And no matter if you're poor, homeless, or rich, we need him. We all need him. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that. And they, and they just figure they can do it on their own. And, you know, uh, let's don't think we're above anybody. We're not. We're not. I know one thing in my work is uh, I come into contact a lot with some homeless and, and people who are in great need. Um, and uh, and a lot of times when I'm talking to these people, it's like you're some of the most real people you'll ever meet. And a lot of times what's going through my mind as I'm listening to them is I'm really not that many steps from being right there on the line with them. I mean, really. Really, we're not. I'm not. I'm not that far from it. If you really, really think about it, right? If you really think about it. So that makes it real for sure. All right. God bless them. All right. And let's keep in uh, keep close to Jesus. All right. And keep preparing. Let's keep in pre uh, preparation mode, but live your life. Of course. Let's stay safe out there this weekend. God bless you. And I'll see you soon.